All right, good morning. Welcome to our unique devotion for the day. We are in Ephesians. We're back at the beginning of chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1, 2, and 3 for you. And then I have a question. There's a lot of in-depth stuff here, so I may end up breaking this chapter up a little bit more. There's actually more to the first section of chapter 2, but something right away is just sort of hitting my heart. So let me get into the scripture. The title is By Grace Through Faith. Uh, so again, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. <clears throat> so that's the short, but it's it's just jam packed with what. Um, as always, I encourage you to go back. Uh, you can re-listen that part of the scripture. Break out your own Bible. Read that. See if God is pointing something out to you. This is what He put on my heart as soon as I saw the word disobedience. What do you disobey? Now, in Philippians chapter 2, I believe it's verse 14. Let me find it. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14. He says, Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Now we come back here and he's talking about doing things as sons of disobedience in the ways of the flesh, um, desires of the flesh and the mind. Uh, it's sort of the same sort of imagery that's going on here. So the word disobedience is what stood out like I had mentioned what do I disobey well I just read Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 because I find myself complaining <laughs> uh, even if it's just a general conversation at work or at home or somewhere with with family complaining about the government complaining about church, complaining about uh, my workplace, complaining about something that happened in my life, maybe a neighbor, maybe it could be anything. And not that any of that complaining is even significant, but for whatever reason, especially when others start to complain, it's like a virus. All of a sudden, I find myself just chiming in with agreement. I'm, I'm still kind of being drawn into their complaining. Um, <clears throat> I'm disobeying. Here in Philippians, he's saying, do, uh, do not, let me find the exact words, do all things without complaining and disputing. It's, it's a command. It's here in the Bible. He's telling you that you should do this. It's a good thing for you to do this. Do it a little bit, especially when you feel like complaining. Don't complain. And see how you feel. See what happens. And, and see the, the, the change in your life in a positive direction, even if it's just in that moment. Sometimes it can be, uh, it can go feel deeper than that and change your whole day, change your whole life, uh, depending on where you're complaining and what you're complaining about. So, my point here <laughs> is that he's talking about that we are made alive, who were dead in our trespasses and sins. We don't need to be held by that, but the things that we've done in the past, and we can move forward, but we need to learn from them. And the best way to learn is to try to practice something new. So in this case, I'm talking about um, complaining. So I need to practice to not complain, practice to bite my tongue. Maybe I need to leave the conversation. Um, 
maybe I need to point out something positive, something opposite than the complaining. Redirect the conversation, redirect the thoughts. There's different, different tools and avenues that can be taken to obey. And then the wonderful thing is that I've found <laughs> when you do those things, when you try to enact them, every once in a while you start to get a glimpse of it felt right, felt better. Um, change the conversation. And the way our bodies work, it ends up changing our, our thoughts, change our emotions, and our body's driven by our emotions. When we're angry and frustrated and upset and complaining, our body sets off all kinds of chemical reactions and it drains the body's energy. It makes us makes us tired and, and it's hard to go it's hard to go back to work and it's hard to do things and then you can't get focused. But I find that when you obey in a, in this way, I'm only talking about one way here, people. There's like tons and thousands of ways that we can obey God. When we do obey, when I do obey and I pull myself out of that conversation, I see everyone else drained in their energy and in their focus, but I'm not. I still have my energy for the day. I still have my, I still have my focus, maybe even a little bit more focus, just a, a hint of more direction and more strength somehow. Stepping out of it has given me more energy and more strength. That's happened on occasion. But then I slip up, I start complaining again, and I feel what it's like. So now I, I can tell what it feels like to not complain and what it feels like to complain. So I, I know the direction of what obedience versus disobedience can, can do mentally, physically, to the people around me. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And I t I'm taking this really deep. So today's challenge is what do you disobey? You know, really take a hard look at yourself. Maybe it's complaining. Maybe that's a good one for you. Uh, you can chime in along with me on that one. Um, maybe there's, there's other things that come into your mind and your thoughts of ways that you may be disobeying God. And try to find creative ways to obey Him. Do it just once. Force yourself to obey Him and see the positive aspects. See how you feel. See... See what your thoughts are. See what's happening in your life. Open that the floodgates of communication with God in this in in any one of those areas, and see what happens. All right, that this is a long video. I did not intend it to be long. Um, I really wish I could just explain it in a much deeper way to everyone, but I don't have that kind of time. So just think about it on your own. Everyone who's watching this, even a non-Christian or someone who's a new Christian or a seasoned Christian, you, you yourself have the ability to communicate to God. So ask Him, are there areas that you need to work on that you are disobeying? Ask Him, what is this Brandon guy trying to explain to me? You know. Open those floodgates. This is all about opening the communication. That's what this channel is here for. Communicating with God on a deeper level and continuing to keep that train rolling and uh, keep that relationship happening. So I'm just going to stop right there. On that note, I hope God gives you all the blessings you deserve and even more so all the blessings you don't deserve. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope I didn't just fry your brain. Um, please like, subscribe. There will be pump-up music uh, this time down in the description box. Always check that. If for some reason there isn't, feel free to go into the Pump Up playlist, pick a song, scroll down, and just randomly pick one, listen. They're all fun. They're all good. Uh, give you some boost of energy. So I will see you next time. I'm going to stop rambling.